At that moment, my eyes met so close to Sonic's eyes that it felt like we were sharing a brotherly kiss. Even though all we were really doing was gently nuzzling our noses together so we could share our tears with one another. This was the closest our eyes could get to each other. Sonic let some tears fall from his eyes as, as he looked into mine. His emerald green eyes could clearly see the waterfalls forming from my baby blue eyes. And it made him feel so sad for me. I tightened my hug around him. And in return, he tightened his hug around me as we embraced each other. And brought our lips together as if we were about to do a brotherly kiss. We would do every so often whenever we were alone together and feeling down. We had not had a single brother kiss since before the Metarex War began. If there was any time we could do it, now just had to be the time. It could be an ingredient to curing me from this emotional sickness I have suffered. From four three months, this could be the message that has been trying to tell me that I am not alone in suffering, nor am I alone in general. I still have friends, and I still have a caring big brother who takes extra special care of me, as if he was one of my parents. Eventually, with our eyes still sharing tears, our lips touched and we blew a small two-way kiss. The moment I had wanted for a week had come true. The distance that had torn us apart had finally shrunk. I no longer felt so lonely inside. This was the perfect medication for my emotional sickness. I realized how wonderful a brother he could be for me. Even though my sadness over Cosmo, I would always remember that I had a great brother who would always stick to me for the rest of our lives until the day that death takes us. We kissed for several minutes, although for me it felt like an hour had gone by when we finally stopped and kept sharing tears. My tears were now a mixture of happiness and sadness. I still felt devastated about Cosmo, but I felt happy to have Sonic here just for me. It was time to put the last three run months behind us and start fresh again. Sonic? I whispered faintly, not sure if he could hear me. Yes, Tails? He replied to confirm that he heard me. I never thought I'd say this, but, but I love you as a brother, Sonic! <laughs> I cried as I saw it right onto his face. I looked into Sonic's eyes, which was all I could see at, at all from being so close to his face. And they looked wide as if he had just been surprised that I confessed my brotherly love to him. I couldn't go without saying those words to him. Sonic was my best friend after all. He was my big brother. The one I idolized. The one I looked up to. The one who taught me so much in my still so young life. He made out the brotherly half of my heart. While Cosmo made out my romantic half. Oh, Tails, I love you as a brother, too. Sonic spoke gently as he rubbed my tail so soothly. Please don't cry anymore, my little brother. I'll always be here to care for you until the end. I knew he had said it with all those words. Nothing more had to be spoken. Our brotherly bond was as strong as it had ever had been before. I hadn't felt this happy since the last time I had a happy moment with Cosmo. For three months, I had suffered with a broken heart, yet now my shattered heart could heal with my big brother's comforting presence. The pieces could, at long last, come back together and create happiness once again. For me. Hardly a moment later, more thoughts flowed into my head including something which I thought would be the best thing to do at a moment like this. Sonic? I spoke again in my soft voice with sadness still hinted in it. Yes, Tails? 
Sonic replied gently. I nearly hesitated to what I was about to say, but I took a few deep breaths and a big gulp. Then I blurted it out. I have something I'd like to show you. Sonic, still holding me tightly in a bear hug, grinned at me and gently loosened his grip on me so that I could get off his lap. Once he finally gave me an opening, I slowly slid off his lap and opened one of my drawers. I rummaged through several gardening books before I found a piece of paper filled with words from the topmost line all the way down to the bottom line. I pulled the paper out from underneath the books and closed the drawer. Just looking at what I had written on this sheet of paper brought even more tears to my eyes. This was more than just any old paper. This was a love poem I had written to Cosmo just a few weeks after we had just returned home. Needless to say, I was a complete emotional wreck at the time. I wrote this, but I thought I had written it well. What do you have there, little buddy? As Sonic in his curiosity. I looked into Sonic's eyes again as I let more tears fall down my cheeks. Sonic put another worried look on his face. I knew he still felt worried for me, but I knew that he was okay with it since this had been a difficult time for me personally. I sat down on Sonic's lap again and showed him the paper I, I had wrote. He stopped just a few words into it, and I could tell why he had done so. He could already understand what this piece was. My Tails, you're quite a good writer, commented Sonic. It's a poem about love and tragedy, I said as I brushed a few tears from my eyes. I wrote this about two weeks after Cosmo's death. Well, Tails, I've never been good at writing, <laughs> but I can tell just by looking at this, you seem to be very good at expressing your feelings, said Sonic. Want me to read it to you? I asked nervously as I felt my legs shaking in Sonic's lap. Sonic gently wrapped one arm around my back and the other on my legs to stop them shaking. He could tell how nervous I was about reading this piece of poetry. I'd love to hear you read it, little bro, answered Sonic in his gentle voice as he turned me into another hug. I took a deep breath for about a minute and cleared my throat before I started reading. I could not contain myself as I pressed that button. The only words I could say were, I love you, as I watched the planet's destruction before my very eyes. I watched you walk away, hopeless with nothing to say. Every day and every night, I dwell on your absence as I plead in my dreams that we will one day be together again. I strain my eyes hoping to see you again. My life has been depressing without you. I have been left wondering why it had to be this way. I have been left trapped in, in a life where I cannot be with you. This is my curse, the longing. This is my curse, time. This is my curse, the yearning. This is my curse. If only what I seek in my dreams were to become the next reality. If the only plant I care for were to recreate you, I only wish to see you, the only one who encouraged me to do what I had to do. I plead for your return. There is love burning to find you. Will you wait for me? Will you be there? I am sleepless for many nights as my nightmares tried to kill me. All I want is my love to return, but demons inside me bar my heart. 
your silence haunts me, but still I hunger for you. I water your seed five times a day. I feel my pain as you bloom into beauty, as I strive to believe you will be reborn when I have turned your seed into a tree. Still I watch and still I ache, but still I wait. I am left in a dark room that feels like a different me. I am not the kid I used to be. The tragedy has left black bars in my heart. The darkness having strained me, strained me. And my relationships with all I've ever known. To see you again, dying inside these walls. I shed my tears like a baby would. But I know we'll meet again, and one day, in the next life, my heart will never stop beating for you, for I know I will one day see you again. And I see your face in these tears. Through all I know, I remain with a broken heart. Through all the pain I suffer, I will never stop loving you. I miss you dearly with all my heart. You made my life so much better. I feel hopeless without you. My love for you will never die. Through all these words and all these emotions, I love you, Cosmo. There is love. Just as I finished my last line, my emotions broke down again, and I began sobbing into Sonic's chest again. I set the poem on my desk so that I wouldn't get it wet with my tears. I then felt Sonic wrapping both of his arms around me again in a tight hug. Tails? I heard Sonic whisper into my ears. I tried my best to stop sobbing as I looked up into Sonic's green eyes once more. Tears still poured from my eyes and formed waterfalls on my cheeks. My brother gave me another grin with a hint of sadness in his eyes. That was so beautiful, little bro. He said in such a nice tone. I just about made me tear up. You're such a great writer, little buddy. First you can fly. Then you're a mechanical genius. A skilled aerialist. A gardener. And now a writer. Cosmo would have loved that poem, Tails. Hearing that last sentence only made me sob some more. Sonic was right. Cosmo would have loved that poem, but she would never get a chance to see it or hear me read it to her. Knowing that tore me up inside and in, into yet another emotional breakdown. I once again sobbed hysterically in Sonic's hug and wrapped my arms around his neck refusing to let go of the warm comfort he was giving me. The least I could do was not weep like a little baby. I couldn't possibly do that after reading a sad poem, especially after my own big brother had just praised it as beautiful. Oh, Tails, my little bro. I heard Sonic whisper as he let out a few sobs of his own that fell onto my face. I looked into Sonic's eyes again, and this time, they were filling with tears too, although nowhere near as much as my eyes were. I could sense he felt so sad for me that he wanted to do anything in the world to put a smile on my face. Sadly, I still felt that today was no day for me to put a smile on my face in such a tragic time like this, but I wanted to be happy. I wanted to be happy for my friends, especially Sonic. Please don't cry, little bro. I'm here just for you, whispered Sonic as he tightened his hug on me until we were sure that we were as close together as we ever could, could be. Thank you so much, Sonic. 
I cried as I tried my best to at least turn the edges of my mouth upwards into a small grin. I'm so happy that you love my writing. It means everything to me. Bye, big bro. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome, Tails, little buddy. Replied Sonic as he tearfully grinned at me. I was finally able to grin at my brother. I was finally able to grin at my brother. And we exchanged some more tears to shed some more of our sorrow away. The only happiness I could feel, though, was only coming from the fact that Sonic was right here with me, giving me the comfort I have sought for so long. And the fact that he had heard my poem, if Sonic could make me happy, then we were off to a good start towards brightening my heart again. Are you feeling okay, my little brother? Sonic asked me once again. I tried to take some deep breaths, but the hiccups left over from all my sobbing nearly choked me to death, which, in turn, made it just about uh, impossible for me to form any words. So all I did was nod my head in response to his question. Sonic patted the back of my head numerous times to help me calm myself down. Then I finally took some deep breaths so that I could speak again. I'm just not sure what to do with myself anymore, Sonic, I said softly. Ever since Cosmo died, I've been so beside myself with frustration, sadness, and anger building within myself. Even after we finally mended our bond, I'm still as sad as I've ever been in my life. I don't know if I'll ever be happy again. Aw, oh, Tails, said Sonic with a sad face. I don't think you'll be sad forever. I think that all you need is to spend some time with me for a few days. Then maybe we can see our friends. And they, maybe they can know how to cheer you up. They've been worried sick about you for three months. I know. I replied with tears still flowing from the sadness I remained to suffer from all on this sad morning. You know, Tails, I've been thinking. I've been meaning to ask you ever since I walked through the door. Said Sonic. Do you want to go out for a little walk with me? It could just be you and me. Nobody else around. I think you should spend a day or two just being with your big brother. I looked into Sonic's emerald green eyes yet again as I made yet another attempt to stop my tears. I felt that I still couldn't be away from Cosmo, but I also felt that Sonic's offer was one I couldn't refuse. He had been wanting to help me ever since we became best buddies again. If there was only one person I could count on to help me get through these desperate times, it could only be Sonic. He knew so well how to feed me happiness whenever I was sad. What do you think, little buddy? Are you up for it? Asked Sonic. Having made up my mind, I swallowed down any excess saliva that was in my mouth and answered, Yes. Sonic gave me a look of happiness as if he was overjoyed to hear me say that word. After I've had my breakfast, that is. I added as I remembered that I hadn't had anything to eat since the early evening hours of yesterday. Breakfast? How long have you been up? Asked Sonic with confusion showing in his eyes. I've only been up for about 15 or 20 minutes. I replied. I was only taking a wild guess because I had lost track of time due to all my crying and sobbing. Well, little bro, sounds like you could do something to eat right now, said Sonic. Hmm, little buddy, if you want, we can have breakfast here and then we'll head out together. 
That sounded like a perfect way to refresh my morning after waking up yet another nightmare about Cosmo. Nothing could compare to a simple day out with Sonic when there was no Dr. Eggman around to torture us with his dumb robots. Okay, big bro. I answered as I did my best to wipe the tears from my eyes. I'll head down to the kitchen and see what I have. You got it, little bro, said Sonic before he loosened his hold on me and let me off his lap. As I jumped off Sonic's lap and walked up to the doorway, I stopped and turned back to see Sonic get off my chair and stretch his limbs. We then exchanged grins with each other for a while until I finally turned to the door and walked out of my bedroom, with Sonic following me closely. He could sense that even now, I didn't want to be alone. If I were alone right now, even in the kitchen, my memories of Cosmo would again take over my mind which I didn't want to have happen at a time like this. Right now, all I wanted to think about was Sonic and the rest of my friends. I could take a wild guess right now and think that Amy and Cream were worried sick about me more than most others. Knuckles probably felt very sad for me, too. The only one I needed to worry about right now, though, was Sonic. I still wanted to make up for hating him for three months, even though we had forgiven each other and had become best brotherly buddies again. I still felt guilty for the way I, I had treated him. Now was the time for us to make up for our mistakes and start a, out fresh again. That would be my goal for the days that followed, until I shed the distance between me and all my friends. Not once had I joined them in a battle against Eggman and his evil empire over the past three months. They had been enduring these three depressing months without my help. The only reason I didn't feel left out was because I didn't want to be anywhere near Sonic. But now this depression was going to end, starting today. I would set my thoughts aside but I would never let my memories fade away from me. My most romantic memories with Cosmo would always be a treasure in my mind. For my mind. While the bad memories would simply be lessons learned from the worst mistakes I had ever made in my life. I would walk out the door with Sonic that morning, feeling like I was in a new world that resembled the old. It was a new world where I had so many fresh memories in my head, and the suffering wouldn't, wouldn't exist as long as I was happy. For that matter, there would be no suffering as long as me and all my friends were happy, especially Sonic. I would not be sad for Cosmo. I would be happy for her, because that was her wish that I shall fulfill as I get ready for the long life I still have ahead of me. I'll forever miss you, Cosmo, and I'll love you with all my heart until the day death consumes me. But I will not shed another tear for you. Your plant, along with my friends, is enough to give me the happiness I need to live a happy life. Miles Tails Prower.